how making time for exercise gives you time back okay so number one excuse that i hear and have been hearing these last couple of months this last year or so is that people don't have time they don't have time to do some exercise they don't have time to cook food they don't have time to do that thing that is going to help them feel fitter healthy and happier and to that i say i get it i understand that you know we've been struggling with working from home we've been struggling with homeschooling we've been struggling with just the sheer stress of the situation that we're in that hopefully we're starting to come out of okay um but I want to talk about how making time for yourself and making time specifically for something like exercise can actually give you time back, can actually create time for you. How does that work? So how does that work, Mike, is the question. Like, if I'm taking 45 minutes out of a day, how is that giving me time back, Mike? That's the question that you're asking right now, right? So let me explain. Say you aren't exercising and you don't make the time. So, you know, if you're not on our, say, Morning Warriors program, you're not getting up at the crack of dawn and you start your day at seven, eight o'clock, whatever time it is, and potentially you're not as fired up or not as G'd up, you're not in as good a mood as had you made that time to exercise, okay? So then it's kind of like sliding doors type thing scenario in terms of you've got one universe where you have exercised and you feel good. You, yes, you got a good sweat on and you had fun training and exercising with other people um, and you've lifted your own mood and you've got it done. And there are so many reasons why you're basically pretty smug for the fact that you've got up a little bit earlier to make the time to exercise. Then let's look at the other scenario, which is you don't get up to do the exercise, you sleep a little bit longer, and then the rest of the day can go differently in terms of you haven't had the benefit of the mood boost. You haven't had the benefit of the energy boost, the energizing nature of exercise. You haven't had the benefit of feeling like you've worked hard so therefore you're going to make better decisions in terms of your food and drink because one thing that a lot of people say to me is you know I work so hard I therefore wanted to eat better as well rather than um, being in the situation or being in the routine or rut whereby you haven't exercised um, you're putting it off until another day and generally not looking after yourself as well as you know that you could have. Because one reason that people give is that they know that they need to do something or they know what they need to do, but they don't actually do it, okay? That's the difference between the people that get results and those that don't, or those that don't change their lifestyles and their habits. It's that they have the knowledge and they do something with it, whether that's they physically do something themselves or whether that's they decide that they want someone else to kick them up the arse to do that thing that they've been talking about forever and ever. So back to this subject of how does exercising give you time back? Well, in essence, it comes from everything feeling and being easier for you once you've done that exercise, especially if you've done it earlier in the day. Like say our morning warriors, they've done their exercise by quarter to seven. And this is generally how the rest of their, their day goes, right? They've got dressed and then they're fired up, ready to take the kids to school or go to work or homeschool or whatever it is. And everything is just easier when you've moved your body. Everything's just easier when you're in a better mood. Everything is just easier and takes less time for you if you're in a better frame of mind which you've created for yourself by exercising right your body rewards you for moving it 
that's the feel good factor. That's the feel good hormones that are released after you've moved your body, but you don't get that reward if you don't move. So is it any wonder that if you're sat in your bum all day working from home for seven, eight solid hours, that you feel lethargic, you feel slow and sluggish. And then, you know, it's like, it's a downward spiral because then you're feeling unmotivated and then you're like, or well, why should I bother? I'll just eat that X, Y, Z or whatever. And I'll start again on Monday. And then Monday comes around and it just keeps going. You're on this little treadmill that you've created for yourself. And it's like, you can break that rut. You can break that habit that you don't want by doing something as simple as adding in exercise somewhere in your life. And exercise doesn't have to necessarily be something that is official. You don't have to attend a class or something. You can quite easily get exercise through just moving your body, going for a walk, making the housework and, you know, a game of itself, running up and down the stairs, um, walking the animals, walking the dogs. I was going to say cats then, but walking the dogs vigorously, um, power walking to go and get the kids, whatever it is, it's like there are opportunities to move your body other than in an official capacity of, you know, you're joining a class or going to the gym or whatever, right? So this is how exercise can create time and give you time back because you invest the time in yourself and what you get back comes back in multiples. It's not just, you know, 45 minutes in and you get 45 minutes back. Over time, it gives you way more back than the time that you put in. But it does have to be regular. It does have to be about being consistent and finding ways of being consistent with your movement, with your opportunities to move and exercise this body, right? Your heart, your lungs. Moving is generally better for our physical and more importantly, our mental health. So if you know that, maybe you didn't know that in terms of the reward system that your body gives, but now you know, you can do something with that. You can do something with that information, which is to make the time to exercise, carve out time, reprioritize how you're using your time. Like all of those death scroll moments that you're doing every day. How much time does that add up to every week? And are you seriously going to tell me that you don't have time to move the body? Because I guarantee if you swipe to the left on your iPhone and you look at your screen time, it will tell you how many hours of death scrolling you've been doing each week and therefore could have been used doing something else that would give you long term benefits as opposed to the short-term benefits of death scrolling, zombie scrolling, as I call it, because you end up going uh, for hours and hours, um, it could give you time back. Time that you're never going to get back unless you do something about it now. So that is my closing message. By making time for exercise, you create and give yourself time back, ultimately because everything just flows a lot easier when you have moved your body so that you feel better, you're in a better state to then tackle everything else.